In this video, we want to go over how to find the equation of a parabola if we know the intercepts. So in this problem, we are looking at finding the equation of a parabola that has x-intercepts of 4, 0, negative 2, 0, and we also know the y-intercept is 0, 6. All right, so first off, the idea here is kind of to work backwards. Usually, you're given the equation and you're asked to find the x-intercepts. So this process, we're going to work backwards. We know one of the x-intercepts is 4, 0, and another x-intercept is negative 2, 0. So if we say that here x is equal to 4, and of course this is when y is equal to 0, and x is equal to negative 2, if we work backwards here, this means if I subtract 4 from both sides, I have x minus 4 equals 0, and if I add 2 to both sides, I have x plus 2 equals 0. So these are my two factors of my quadratic, x, plus, or x minus 4 and x plus 2. And we know that those would equal 0. Those would be my x-intercepts when y was equal to 0, right? It's only an x-intercept when y is equal to 0. So if I put my y back in here, then I have a pretty good idea about what my parabola is, at least as far as the x-intercepts go. And we could FOIL this out. Actually, let's just leave it like that. Let's just leave it in that form. Um, OK, so I know if I have this parabola right here, it has the x-intercepts of 4 and negative 2. right? If I plug 4 in for x, I'm going to get 0 times 6, which is 0. If I plug negative 2 in for x, I'm going to get negative 6 times 0, which is 0. So I know those are x-intercepts. But now we have to deal with this y-intercept business. So I want to go take a look at Desmos, and I want to put our equation in here. So we have y equals x minus 4 times x plus 2. All right. And this is what our graph looks like. So notice we have our x-intercepts here at negative 2 and positive 4, just like we want. But for this graph, we have a y-intercept of negative 8. If I FOILed this or multiplied this out, I would see my constant term is negative 8. If I multiply this out, I get uh, x squared minus 2x minus 8. That would be my graph right there with a y-intercept of negative 8. So the truth is there are infinitely many parabolas that have x-intercepts of negative 2 and positive 4. But we need the parabola that has a y-intercept of 6. So we need a parabola that goes through the point 0, 6. Pull this down a little bit. OK, we need the parabola that goes right through here. How are we going to get that parabola? Well, what we need to do is we need to manipulate the a value. If you think about a quadratic equation is ax squared plus bx plus c, um, that a value is something we would multiply in front here. Let's just mess with this a little bit. Let's say I put a 2 in here. I just times that by 2. Look what happened. I still have the same x-intercepts, but I have a different y-intercept. It got lower, right? Let's put, in, um, let's put in a half. I still have the same x-intercepts, but now I have a different y-intercept. What if I put in a negative half? Oh, that flipped it over. So what we can do in Desmos, which is kind of neat, is we can put a variable here to represent this number. Let's call it a. And then it says add slider. So now it has a equal to 1. So this was the parabola that we started with, with the y-intercept of negative 8 down here. And I can change this a value. All right, If I make a bigger, it's going to make my parabola skinnier. If I make x a smaller, closer to 0, it's going to make it wider. Actually, let me change these values here to like negative 3 to 3. That will give us a little better range here. Makes it very wide if that a value is close to 0. What happens when it's negative? Ah, it flips over. That's what I need, right? Because I need this parabola to go through negative 2, 0 and 4, 0. And we're looking good here as far as going through those points, changing a doesn't change my x-intercepts, but it changes my y-intercepts. So it looks like just guesstimating around negative 0.76 is what my a value is going to need to be in order for this to work. 
but we don't always have decimals, right? So how do I find this A value out algebraically? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to go back over here, and we are going to continue with our equation. We're going to put this A value in here, and we need to algebraically solve for that A value. Okay, we're going to figure out what this is, and we're going to do that by using the y-intercept that we want. So we know when x is 0, we want y to be 6. So we're going to plug 0 in for x, and we're going to plug 6 in for y, plugging this value into this equation. Okay, so I'm going to plug 6 in for y. I'm going to leave that a value. I'm going to plug 0 in for x, and you can see by doing this now, we create an equation that has only a as its variable, so we can solve for a. All right, so we'll simplify what's in these parentheses here. We will do this multiplication. And then to solve for a, we're going to divide both sides by negative 8. And so we get our a value is negative 3 fourths. So that is the value of a that needs to go in this place right here to give us the correct y-intercept. So there we have it. Our answer is going to be y equals negative 3 fourths times x minus 4 times x plus 2. That is the equation. If you want to FOIL this out, multiply this out, and distribute in the negative 3 fourths to put the equation in standard form, you certainly can do that. So let's go ahead and do that in case you're asked to write the equation in standard form. What you need to do is multiply all this stuff together. I would start by multiplying those two binomials together. You're going to have to keep this product in parentheses because the negative 3 fourths needs to be distributed to the entire product. So we go ahead and multiply that out. We can simplify what's inside the parentheses by combining like terms. And now we can distribute the 3 fourths into our parentheses. And we get negative 3 fourths x squared minus 6 fourths, which would reduce down to 3 halves minus 6. And that is the equation in standard form, which is y equals a x squared plus bx plus c. I want you to notice here that in standard form, this a value this a value is the same as it was when we were in factored form. Okay, So factored form would be y equals a times x minus 1x intercept x minus another x intercept. And that's the form we were in before. Let's take a look at that graph before we wrap this up. We estimated negative 0.76. That was pretty close. 3 fourths is negative 0.75. We had negative uh, 3 fourths. So let's get rid of that. Let's put this in here and put negative 3 fourths in there. Boom, we got it. There's our y-intercept. There's our two x-intercepts. Nailed it. All right, hope that helps you find the equation of a parabola given the intercepts.